important for us more. to be honest with you yes. and say there's a lot more that you have to do, mm -hmm. right? Hard work alone does not produce successful people. We know that. My grandmother was a hardworking woman mm -hmm. all her life, mm -hmm. right? I work less harder than she did. But at the age where I am, at the age where she was at my age, I'm far more, far more successful. Mm -hmm. So it's not the hard work. Mm -hmm. And we have to be honest with ourselves and say, but what form of leverage can we employ here? If I've built a business and I've got good people working for me and these people are honest, are they not part of your resources? Welcome to the Lebu Lion Show, a podcast that doesn't have a slogan yet because we're trying to rebrand our new image. But I'm really excited to be here once again. I'm your host, Lebu Lion SA, and here we talk all things marketing, brand building, business mindset, and sometimes pop culture. Now, guys, I know that some of you are shaking after our last episode. And the, the point of all of this isn't to shock anyone or to offend anyone. It's just for us to have a conversation and to be open to the concept of pulling from different sources of information before you make an opinion. Because sometimes we say really hurtful things that could change the course of society. We need to be more mindful of the things that we say. And before we get into today's conversation, we don't have time and our guest is for Phenomenal, and he's got so much wisdom to share, but we don't have a lot of time with him. So I'm going to run through our intro very quickly so we can start talking to our phenomenal guest. Remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, do all the things that help people to see this podcast, to get this podcast to grow and to allow our community to be a real lion tribe that roars all over the world. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest. And you know how we do on the show. We do not read someone's bio and tell you who they are. We allow them to do that themselves. So, Witness, Mr. Witness Mdaga, welcome to the Lebo Lion Show. Thank you for having me. How are you, Lebo? I'm okay. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you, you know, for asking. It, it always shocks me when Witness comes across as this like shy, quiet man. Because <laughs> I've been knowing this man. <laughs> and he's a ball of confidence and energy. So this is always shocking to me. But I'm really happy to have you here. I know TikTok is excited that we're doing this. TikTok is I'm very looking, excited. I'm looking forward to seeing the responses. They're going to be very, very happy. Please let us know who you are. Okay, my name is Witness Mtaka. Like mm -hmm. you said, I am a businessman. I'm a property investor. And I'm also the author of a book called It's More Than Just Money. Okay. A guide to escaping the red race and building generational wealth. Tata. Now, my journey is quite easy and simple when it comes to explaining it. Mm -hmm. Because I was literally born in a hut in Guyana. In a hut? Because like the in the rural areas? In the rural areas. I okay. was born in a hut. My mother tell, told me that the ambulance was late. It literally arrived late and wow. I was born. Uh, and then I went to live in a place called Tlepkhat. Okay. Uh, I think I must have been eight months old. And then I lived in Tembisa. I lived in Alexander. Mm -hmm. In the year 2008, uh, my mother discovered that she overpaid her property, our home, by 150,000 rands. Whoa. And then she took that money and built back rooms at home. And she said to me, if I want to go to university, I must look after those tenants and look after those back rooms. Wow. And that's how I got introduced into the property industry. Mm. Now, at first, I didn't think of it as an industry. I didn't even know there was an industry called the property industry. I just thought you just collect shelter room and use it for whatever your heart tells you to use it for. Wow, that's quite an impressive story. How does one overpay on the property like that's an interesting concept i How think does she that was happen? she was paying more on her bond okay um mm -hmm. so i think back in the day how they how they would pay for their bonds they would do a, a stop order from their salary mm. so it was deducted directly from the from the salary before she even gets the money okay and whatever else she had she would pay onto the bond so you say you're the author of a book called It's More Than Just Money. Here it is. It's there looking yeah. really cool. And it says it's a guide to escaping the rat race and building generational 
wealth. Yeah. Let's unpack that statement. What is the rat race? The rat race mm-hmm. is when um, there's act. You remember when you when you are employed or working, mm-hmm. you only get paid if you are working, okay. right? No work, no pay. Whether you're a CEO or you are a cleaner, mm. right? You get your salary simply because you're actively working. Mm. You're employed in an office. You're employed in a business. Mm. You are running the business. You report to the, the boss or you report to the shareholders, whoever it is that you report to, mm. right? And then uh, out of that, you earn what we call active income. And then there's something called passive income. That's mm-hmm. money that you earn whether you work or not. Mm-hmm. So everybody starts in the red race where in order for us to make some sort of money, we have to actively be working. If we're not working, uh, then we're not getting the money. Yeah. That's the long and short of what the red race is. If I stop working today, I won't make any money and therefore won't be able to pay for my expenses and anything else. The, therefore, because of that, I'm in the red race. But if I can stop working today and I still get passive income, then I'm no longer in the red race. And how does passive income help you build generational wealth? So a guide to escaping the red race and building generational wealth. So you build the generational wealth in the, is in the building of the assets that produce passive income. Okay. It's not the passive income itself yeah. that gives you generational wealth because passive income is not created out of vacuum, yes. right? There has to be assets that one is invested in mm-hmm. that continue to give that person money whether they've worked or not, okay. right? So I'll give you an example. Simple example. Let's say, for instance, you've written a book, which you have, yes. right? Audacity. How many times did you have to write the book? Once. And how many times are you going to get paid from that book? As many times as I can market it. As many times as you can market it. Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to go write the book again mm. in order for you to be paid for the book again, mm-hmm. right? So I wrote this book once. I can sell as many copies as I want to sell, mm. right? For as long as I'm not involved actively in the selling process of the book, it's passive, mm-hmm. right? If And how many times do you have to build a room? Once. And once the room is built and you've put in a tenant, how many times do you, are you going to get paid from that room? As many times as you've got a te- tenant. So for as long as the room exists yes. and there's somebody that's occupying it, mm-hmm. you are always going to get paid, right? So which means the first initial work that you put in, which is active to produce that room or to build it, mm. right, requires you to be involved. But once it's done, whatever that room creates and produces is passive income. And for me, that is what creates generational wealth for people. When you've built a business and you've put in systems in that business and it can run independent of you and the business can literally be passed down from one generation to the next generation, you've put yourself in a position where you're actively creating um, generational wealth. And that obviously comes from being able to create assets okay. that produce the passive income, which is more like cash flow. Yes. Yeah. So you're using a lot of big words and I'm not saying this to patronize anybody who's watching. I'm saying a lot of the time we don't understand the meaning of words yeah. when people talk about something they're a subject matter expert in. Yes. And so we don't actually get the concept of what the person is saying. Correct, so I yeah. like that you broke it down and you were like a book, a room, you know, people can actually have a visual imagination of what that thing actually could be, that passive asset that they're building. So now you spoke about the fact that you do need an initial investment to be able to build the assets, right? Mm -hmm. So if I am a student or I feel like my job pays me too little or I feel like I actually just don't have the money, enough money to to start investing in property, where do I start? So the thing is, before I get into the property-related stuff, Mm -hmm. to create any form of passive income, Mm. it doesn't necessarily have to be property alone. That's where people get it wrong, right? It's not property alone that produces passive income. There are assets that are out there. If you buy a vending machine and put it in a place that's busy, Mm -hmm. all you have to do is refill the products in the vending machine. Mm -hmm. For as long as there are products for people to buy from the vending machine, you are making passive income. Mm -hmm. So which means you don't necessarily have to earn a million rands or a hundred thousand rands or fifty thousand rands a month for you to be able to invest firstly in stuff that produce passive income. Mm -hmm. Now let's take it further into property, right? You ask the question, I'm a young person, I'm a student 
and I'm not working and I want to be involved in the property industry. Number one, for you to start making money in property, you don't necessarily have to own the property. Mm -hmm. That's where people are getting it wrong again. Mm -hmm. Property is an industry, right? And an industry has got a value chain. Mm -hmm. Just like any other industry has got a value chain. There's that guy that is working as the bricklayer. Is he a property owner? Mm -mm. But he's making money in the property investment game. Industry, yeah. So he looked at it and said, I might not own the project, but this is the skill that I'm going to work on for me to make money from this industry. Mm. right? So a young person might not necessarily have the skills of a bricklayer. However, a young person might have the skill of communication, can be able to gather uh, certain people in the room and talk to them about certain investments that he's seen, which means he can gather knowledge about the property industry, find out how to look for and source the right kind of property investments, mm -hmm. and sell off those deals to those people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be owning a property for him to start making money. Like, let me tell you what's happening in the township okay. in terms of sourcing, right? So we've got rooms in the township, and... A lot of our guys that find tenants for us mm. are not agents. Hmm. So these guys, they say, they put up um, an advert and say, there's a room available in an area, let's say, for instance, Hospital View, Tembisa. Mm. And Lebo is looking for a place to stay. Lebo is going to see the advert. Mm -hmm. And Lebo is going to contact that guy and say, I want to see the room. Obviously, the guys have built relationships with the landlords. That landlord... I will bring people to come view your room. I'm not an agent. However, the people that are going to pay me are the tenants before they move in. I'm going to charge them admin fee for finding the room for them. Mm -hmm. It's more like a sourcing fee. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to act like I'm an agent. However, I'm going to play the role of introducing the landlord to the people. It's like Uber. They don't own cars, mm -hmm. but they've got a lot of people that are operating on their app. So that website, that advert that that young person has set up acts more like an Uber. It's a platform where the tenant gets to meet the landlord. Mm -hmm. That's where you start making money and that's how most people in the township have started doing it and it can be done at a larger scale if that's where you want to put yourself in previously we had a guest who spoke about airbnb hosting yes what are your thoughts on that uh well it's a good pl it's a good way to make money yeah i'll tell i'll give you an example we do it as well okay in, in our business one of our businesses specifically focuses on airbnb okay right it runs it rents our existing units from us from our company mm -hmm. and then it operates them as airbnb how that works is that um that company doesn't necessarily own any property mm. however it it's able to rent property from property owners which is our company in this instance and then operates it as an airbnb mm. right they make far more money um operating the Airbnb because remember Airbnb is more like operating a hotel mm. the long and short of it mm. literally you are hosting people so which means you've got to have hospitality mm -hmm. you got to know what's going on uh, you're going to be somebody who's going to make sure the place is clean uh, it's nice it's set up correctly mm -hmm. and be able to take care of guests mm -hmm. right so because you do that you get to make money uh, a lot more than what you are paying the landlord for Mm -hmm. Right. Some people buy the property and put it on Airbnb. You make far more than doing it, um, renting out on a long term, mm -hmm. on a month to month basis. But all that depends on your ability to market the property, mm -hmm. your ability to look after guests, your ability to attend to queries on time, your ability to be available at any time. Because guests can, can arrive at two o'clock in the morning and say, where is my key? Mm -hmm. I want to sleep. I paid for the apartment. I paid for the room. Whatever it is that you're providing mm. to the guest. You spoke about something that's close to my heart. Yeah. You said people need to know how to market yes. their assets or whatever they're owning in the property Definitely. industry in order to win. Let's talk about property marketing. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it because I think so many people, when they hear people like you speaking, right? Yeah. They're hearing the numbers, they're thinking the bricklayer, they're thinking all of that. And they're thinking, if I just have that together, boom, 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 I'm going to make the money. Yes. So how does marketing fill the gap? 
Okay. Firstly, let me say this. Mm-hmm. It's a misconception mm-hmm. that if you buy property, you're going to get wealthy. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of property owners in this country. Your mother owns a property. My mother owned a property. The lady next door to my mother, a lot of people own properties, mm-hmm. but not all of them are wealthy. Mm-hmm. Because to make money in any business, you have to do things in a certain way. Mm-hmm. So for you to just think, I'm going to buy it and put a tenant and it's all going to be nice, I'm going to make money, it's a misconception, mm-hmm. right? So that's where now marketing bridges the gap, right? If you are doing the normal rental, mm-hmm. um, one unit is not going to make you a lot of money. But if you've got multiple units, then not only are you going to need the skill of marketing, you also need the skill of management. Mm-hmm. How do you manage all these things, right? How do you manage the utilities? How do you manage the costs? How do you manage um, your employees on the ground that are looking after the properties, mm-hmm. right? And how do you do tenant management? Which now speaks to what you were asking me, marketing. How do you market these properties because every property requires you to give it a certain image right number one and also be able to get it into the face of the people that you want to rent the property from Mm -hmm. i gave you an example about the guys that are sourcing um that are finding tenants for landlords in the township right those people specifically have to have the ability to market the property but you as a landlord you have to have the ability to connect with those people and constantly make them aware that your property is available Mm -hmm. and there's a difference between advertising and marketing Mm -hmm. you can put an ad for a property but that's not necessarily marketing praise jesus right (laughs) praise jesus (laughs) i'm glad because a lot of people just think if i've put an ad i've marketed marketed the property no but but (laughs) marketing if i but that's not the case right you have to differentiate between putting up an ad and constantly doing marketing for your property business mm-hmm. how do you like if i'm sitting here talking for instance my book is there this is part of marketing mm-hmm. right it's not necessarily an ad it's product placement it's product placement mm-hmm. which is marketing exactly. right we're talking as i give information to people that get to understand oh, i can find this in the book mm-hmm. that's what marketing is thank you right so it goes back to the property industry as well Constantly putting yourself in a position where if somebody moves out, I can immediately find a tenant Mm -hmm. because I'm constantly marketing the property even when I've got a tenant in it. I love that. You just gave them a really nice short masterclass of the difference between advertising (laughs) and marketing, which is really important because so many people, they want to make money. Right, mm-hmm. and they mm-hmm. understand the things that can make money, but they don't understand how to activate that thing making money. Yeah, and that's what marketing does for people. For sure. So I'm watching this podcast now, Witness and Daga, and then he's there. It's more than just money as a book, and I'm sitting here going, I've got five thousand rands in my bank account or ten thousand rands, but I'm really interested in starting to play in the property industry. Yeah. Where do I start? Give us a very short, basic picture of. What does it look like to start and start to grow my property portfolio so that I can actually be a a worthy investor in the game? I know the first thing is you make sure you've got an income. Okay. Get a job, (laughs) right? Um, Get a job, start a business. Yeah. So it's 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 one thing to sell people a dream and say get into this thing, it's gonna work. Mm. It, It. But we have to be realistic and tell people what it actually requires. You have to build a track record with the bank, especially if you're going to, if you have 5,000, you can't buy property. Yeah. You can't afford property. Mm-hmm. So they take that 5,000 invested in your own education. Mm-hmm. Have you read books on the subject? Have you watched podcasts on the subject? Mm-hmm. You know, have you attended events on the subject, right? Have you, have you network with, networked with enough people in the industry? How many agents do you know? Mm. How many developers do you know? Right. So the first investment that you have to make is an investment in yourself. Mm -hmm. And you do that through education and continuous education. Right. If I've got five thousand, I start there, put education into the brain and into my system. Mm -hmm. Then I find a way to make at least three thousand five hundred a month from a job. 
uh, remember the 5,000 is finished. Yeah. You invested in education. I get you. Now, how do you now start making 3.5? Because mm -hmm. remember, for you to be eligible for the FLISPs, FLISP subsidy, you have to at least earn 3,501 rands. You know, the government can subsidize you with up to 127,000 rands if you're a first-time property buyer. You're a South African. Mm -hmm. You can get a bond for that property, right? So all of that goes back to you now starting to create some form of income for yourself, mm -hmm. right? And income can come in a lot of different ways. A lot of people make money. For instance, in the book, I talk about formalizing your informal business, mm -hmm. right? So where I say, even somebody who sells on the streets makes money every single day. Mm -hmm. The difference between that lady's money and your corporate job money is because yours is documented mm. in a bank account hers is not but if she starts to deposit that money into a business account on a daily basis mm -hmm. the bank will start to see that she's making money she mm. is bankable mm. because she is making some money on a daily basis right that's number one number two for her to formalize that she puts herself in a position where she's getting a salary from her business it's separate from her the business is making money every day mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's your money but you get a set salary at the end of the month which is what you are going to use to say that to the bank i want to buy property on an individual capacity here are my financials for my business they can see the business is making money on a daily basis on a monthly basis mm -hmm. here's my salary that's recorded in my bank statement on a monthly basis as well, mm -hmm. right? So what a lot of people do, they get the money, they, and that's what living from hand to mouth literally is, mm -hmm. right? You get the money today, you spend it on whatever. But if you record that money in a bank account, you'll get to see at the end of the month how much you're making. And it gives you power to now access leverage. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the growth in the property industry is propelled by leverage. Mm -hmm. and, and what is leverage? Leverage is... If, if I'm going to a certain place, let's say I want to go to Kempton Park right now, mm -hmm. I can say I don't need any tool and any vehicle. I'm witness. I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to walk. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get there in the next 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Right? But if I say I'm going to catch an Uber, I'm going to uh, drive the car, I'm going to catch the how train, what have I done? I've now I've now activated leverage. Mm -hmm. Something that's going to get me there quicker. That's what leverage literally is. I could spend 20 years saving for a property or I can go to the bank and ask for a million rand or 500,000 rands. Mm -hmm. They will borrow it to me. So as a person that's starting out, you look after your credit record, you pay your stuff on time, you build your credit record mm. and you build your relationship with your bank. So no bank is going to borrow money to someone they don't know. Mm -hmm. You have to have had that relationship with them. And say, guys, I've been banking with you for the last five years. This is how much my business makes on a monthly basis. This is how much I pay myself as a salary mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. I want to buy a property now. That's how you get financed. And that applies to everyone, including freelancers. <laughs> Right? Because some, some people that are freelancers, we were talking about freelancing earlier on. That's <laughs> yeah. why you're laughing. Right? <laughs> so somebody earns the money, yeah. but it's irregular yes. income. It's yeah. not the same amount every month. Yes. But if you separate that money and put it in a business and say, my job, my business is freelancing. Mm -hmm. I treat it as a business. I earn a salary, not from, from the, the people that are paying me, yeah. but from the business. Mm -hmm. You've now put yourself in a position where you can be taken seriously when you want a loan. Mm. right and when you find yourself in a position where you've now treating it as a business you're not going to be driven crazy crazy by a million rands coming in because mm. you know it's a million rand that belongs to the business my salary is 50,000 rands my salary is 20,000 rands mm. which gives you sustainability now you can think of other ways to grow your business we'll get into that one day when you call me back here again. Wow, and I can break it the down. audacity, <laughs> sir. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I'm hearing you share a lot of valuable information. And I think it's got people thinking, right? Because I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm thinking about certain things. And the one thing that I want to talk to you about is the concept of entrepreneurship, right? Yeah. Is entrepreneurship the only way we as African people can create generational wealth? 
No, it's not. Okay. Uh, my mother was a nurse for mm-hmm. 32 years. She was not an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying I come from a wealthy family. Mm-hmm. My mother was a single parent nurse. She had four kids. She lost two. I was the third one and I've got a younger brother. Mm-hmm. Right? So we, but someone like my mother wouldn't have been able to take someone like me to varsity. Mm-hmm. Had she not invested in some form of a business. I don't think a nurse's salary can afford University. the kind of varsities I went to. Mm. You understand? So, and now, I don't necessarily need money. I've got the skills and the education and the networks and the know-how. That produces money. Mm-hmm. So, her investment in my education allowed me. But for her to be able to make that investment, she had to invest in the rooms. She had to invest in a business that produces income. Right. So the saddest thing about the black community is that we don't prioritize entrepreneurship. You know, we leave we leave our townships to go work in other people's communities. And 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 that's the reason why a lot of our communities are not improving. Mm. We have to prioritize entrepreneurship. Right. Generational wealth has got levels. Mm-hmm. Right. There's the level of nurses what my mother did. Mm. But there's the Patrice Mutsipe level. Mm -hmm. Patrice Mutsipe is an entrepreneur. So you have to look at what is the thing that is producing the most millionaires. Mm -hmm. It's entrepreneurship. We can jump and say whatever we want to say, but that's the line of work, as stressful as it is, that is producing the most financially successful people. I hear you. And I like your point. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's got people thinking because... You know, there's a conversation that people like to have about is there a difference between someone being a business person and an entrepreneur? Yeah. So there's a, there's a whole conversation about that. But I like how you've put but it. But remember, remember something. I know where you, why you're asking that. Yeah. Whitey well, Basson was an employee. Mm-hmm. But Whitey Basson is a multi, multi, multi yes. dollar millionaire. Yes. Right? Uh, but Christo Viz was the entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, he's not a, he was a multi, multi, multi billionaire. Yes. You understand? But white, white, white person was wealthy and is wealthy and influential mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. I'm in no way saying don't work. Not every work is going to produce a millionaire. Mm-hmm. Like if you are digging on the street, you are not going to be a millionaire by digging. Mm-hmm. So it's important for us more. to be honest with you yes. and say there's a lot more that you have to do. Mm-hmm. Right? Hard work alone does not produce successful people. We know that. My grandmother was a hardworking woman mm-hmm. all her life, mm-hmm. right? I worked less harder than she did. But at the age where I am, at the age where she was, at my age, I'm far more, far more successful. Mm-hmm. So it's not the hard work. Mm-hmm. And we have to be honest with ourselves and say, but what form of leverage can we employ here? If I've built a business and I've got good people working for me and these people are honest, are they not part of your resources? Yes. Are they not helping you with leverage? So which means what sort of soft skills can I develop? Mm-hmm. Am I good with people? Yes. I have to look into that. If I want a high paying job in corporate, it just it doesn't fall from the sky. Hey. You don't get into corporate and be the CEO of MTN. Yes. There's certain skills that you develop for you to be at that level. And not everybody will be CEO. Because it's the, only one position. It's only one position. <laughs> exactly. But everybody can be entrepreneur if they want to. Yes. You understand? Mm-hmm. So if we're getting into the job market, we're all eyeing the CEO's job. Only one of us is going to get it. Mm-hmm. But any of us can wake up tomorrow and start a business and be far more and be successful in 10 years' time. The key word in our conversation so far has been leverage. Yeah. Right? Using the resources you have to do more and get more out of life. Yes. I love that. And I think it speaks so well to the title of your book. It's more than just money. Mm -hmm. Because money alone can't solve your problems. No. You need all those resources you were talking about to give you leverage. Yeah. So someone's watching this and like, wow, I'm inspired by witness. He's amazing. And they don't know that you offer more than just the book. So let's talk about the other things that you offer so they can tap into your offerings and learn more about property and get to live a life that they love. Yeah. So obviously my journey is is more surrounded in the property industry. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a whole lot of work that we do in the background um, as well, in the education space, Mm -hmm. uh, in the publishing space. I self-published the book and I also help other people publish their own books. Mm -hmm. And we've got a movement that it's more than just money uh, movement, uh, which is the business and property education movement, where we go across the country 
uh, and help conscientize people with entrepreneurial knowledge, mm. skills, and the understanding of investing in property, right? So some of these things that we've discussed today, we go deeper. Right? How do you build a portfolio? How do you start a property investing portfolio? Mm -hmm. How do you use your salary as capital? Because people don't understand your salary is actually your capital mm -hmm. to start the business that you want to start. And the easiest business for you to start is the property business. You know, if you go to a bank, I won't mention a name, yeah. any bank right now, and ask for a million rands to buy their shares, they will not give it to you. Of course. They don't trust their own shares. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you, you, you want how much? Mm -hmm. To buy what? Our shares. As performing as we are right now, mm -hmm. they're not going to give you the money. Mm. But that same bank will give you a million rands to buy a property. Mm -hmm. Within two weeks, you'll have the money. You'll buy the property. That tells me that that is the easiest industry to get into. Mm -hmm. But you've got to do it right. You talked about leverage. That is leverage, right? Mm. But debt is a two-edged sword, right? You can take debt, it's like an explosive. It's more like an explosive. Yes. Take an explosive, you go to the mines <laughs> and mine gold. Or you take an explosive and blow your house down. Mm -hmm. That's what debt is. Mm -hmm. You either use it to mine gold or you use it to blow your house down. Absolutely. So if you're not careful about leverage, leverage can ban you. Hey, you know, James so, on James on James. Hey, so you have to understand exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, don't look at a podcast like this and say, witness said, mm -hmm. and therefore I'm going to do it because witness said. Yes. Gather all the knowledge that you can about the subject matter where you're operating, mm -hmm. right? So that's what we, we that's what I do. And then I've, we've also got a technology company nice. where um, we focus specifically you talked about marketing. Mm -hmm. It's a listing platform that helps people in primarily in the township and in urban areas to market their rental properties, okay. right? And then it also uh, has a property management element to it that allows those people uh, to be able to manage their properties online okay. and see everything that's happening, right? You. And also be able to collate all the finances and give a statement to the bank and say, I've managed, I've been managing 10 rooms. Here's how it's performing, mm. right? Our system can create all of that for them. And then the same system can allow you to get a plumber on the go. Okay. Same as you can get a ride on the go, right? So that's what we're working on. And that's what we created. But most importantly, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm just sharing education. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, I'm writing books. I'm building platforms. I'm calling other successful people to come and speak on my platforms and empower people. Because my philosophy and ideology is, is like this. I always say this. I used to have a spazzle shop, right? Mm -hmm. And I used to say to my business partner, <coughs> sorry, I used to say to him, I'm praying for the community to prosper. Mm -hmm. He's like, why? I'm like, when the community prospers, they're going to come and buy from us. Yes. And we're going to prosper mm. too. And for me, I'm praying for South Africa to prosper. Yes. The more prosperous people we have in our country, mm -hmm. the more products that we can create yep. and we'll have customers that afford to buy our products. Exactly. And, and that's what the movement is all about. I want to create enough wealthy and successful people. And when I say wealthy, I'm not necessarily talking about the billions, mm. right? I'm talking about someone being financially independent mm -hmm. because they started to invest in property. Mm. Uh, you get a young person who's a medical doctor who affords to get into the industry, doesn't know how to, right? Mm. Because most young people, I'll, I'm going to end off this way. This is how the system is. You're a young person, right? In your 20s, you get your first job. Most of the time, what's the first thing that you buy? I have no idea. A, a car. A car. A car. Right? <laughs> what is that? Negative cash flow. Mm -hmm. It's not producing any cash flow for you. So you, you start off, you don't have debt. Now, as you start, minus 200,000, minus mm -hmm. 500,000. Yeah. If you love the nicer ones, minus a million. Exactly. Right? And then on a monthly basis from your salary, you are paying and servicing debt. Mm -hmm. And then if you're a young guy, you meet a beautiful woman like Lewi, like... Ah, society says I must get married. That, uh, Let's take a loan. Oh. And get married and pay for the for the wedding. Yeah. Right? What is that? More 
a trap that gets you further into debt. Mm -hmm. And that's what create that's what that's what creates the red race. And then you mm -hmm. say, now that we married, Lebo says you're not gonna put me in the room in the township. Mm -hmm. I want my own house. Mm -hmm. Then you buy a house. After buying the house, now you've got debt on the house, debt on the car, debt on the wedding loan that you have to service. There's no way you are, you afford to quit your job. Mm -hmm. You have to continue to work to service that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And every time you get a, a a raise, you want a better car, you want a better house. Now, there's another young person who's getting the job, who's 25, and and the first thing they decide to buy is a property to rent out. Mm. Now, they're starting out and they're getting cash flow. They don't have to live in that property. Yes. They're getting cash flow. Someone might argue and say, but some of the properties that people buy, they 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 pay off everything. You know, the, the debts that are associated with the property mm. is the same as the rental. True. But if you don't own the property, you don't have any capital gains. But if you own it, You've got some capital gains. Plus, you're not the one that pays for it. Yes. It's the tenant that pays for all of those things. Whereas the guy that's married, servicing the car, servicing the bond, is the one doing everything from his salary. That young person might even decide, now nah, I'll do multi-units. Mm. I'll build rooms in the township. The cash flow is much higher. Yes. Right? Business allows you to get the freedom that you're looking for. And we must see our jobs and see our first jobs as that opportunity to get free. And how do you get free? You don't get free by buying more stuff and accumulating stuff. You get free by reinvesting your cash flow. If I can leave someone with something today, it's the key word, cash flow. Mm -hmm. Cash flow, you know, the cash flow management. <laughs> Someone's where, name came up when you yeah, said cash yeah. flow. <laughs> our, our big brother says it's Something's called wrong with me cash flow management, <laughs> yes. right? So you can't yeah. manage cash that's not flowing in. Yes. Right? For you mm. to manage cash, mm -hmm. it needs to be flowing in. Right? So when you start by uh, servicing a lifestyle, the cash is constantly flowing out as it flows in. Yes. So you need to be able to say, how do I take what I have mm -hmm. and create other streams of income that's going to force the cash to keep flowing in? Yes. And the property industry allows you to do that. We looked at several ways you can make money in the property industry today. Right? Some of you have got skills. Um, you can write better books. You've accumulated skills over the years. Mm -hmm. You know how to manage a business more than anyone. Why aren't you putting it in the book? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you selling the book? Why aren't you making passive income from that? Why aren't you blogging? Yeah. Why aren't you making money from a website? Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a lot of things that we've got to look into. But the key thing about what we are talking about for me is the constant ability to increase cash flow. Yes. If you're going to teach yourself something, teach yourself to increase the cash that's flowing into your life. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Witness Daga. And the key words from our conversation today are cash flow is king. Mm -hmm. Leverage will take you everywhere. Mm -hmm. And always educate yourself. Those are the three things that I got from our conversation today that are really rooted in the principles of our podcast. You know, uh, we are an entrepreneurial podcast. We are about helping people get the knowledge they need to take their lives to the next step or the next level. Yeah. And I think everything you shared today, today has been mind-blowing. I think for a lot of people watching, very informative. Thank you, Witness. Before we end this podcast, I want to read the back of your book, just the sure. first paragraph, yeah. so people can understand why they should get this book if they're interested in getting to the property game. So it says, a masterclass in building something out of nothing. It's more than just money is a guide and a tool to help you escape the rat race and build generational wealth for you and your family. The book is a practical guide. You may probably already know some of the ideas in this book, but here they are presented in a way that is easy to understand. Whether you are a seasonal inv seasoned investor, a CEO, or just a young person starting out in your journey, you will find the 60 concepts outlined in this book simple to put into practice. And I can say, as somebody who loves words and loves reading, if the back of a book is this easy to read, it's probably easy to understand. 
trust me, the way things are written gives you an, a glimpse into how the person speaks, how the person teaches. So I would definitely advocate for getting this book if you want to learn how to create a life that's more than just money, that's more than just the tools that we get, but a life that where you're empowered, you know, where you get to build your dream life, where you get to be the person you want to be and really find true happiness, safety and generational wealth for the people that you love. Witness, do you have anything else left to say before we end off this podcast? Yeah, I do. It's my okay. favorite quote. Okay, love it. Uh, by, by somebody called Leonard Ravenhill. Okay. He says, the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized in the lifetime of that opportunity. So which means opportunity is more like a window. It opens and it closes. Being young is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Being healthy is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's a window of opportunity. We have no control over anti-aging. You know, no matter anti how, how much anti-aging you take, <laughs> you're going to get old someday. So you have to use your youth um, as effectively as you can because mm -hmm. you only be young, you're only going to be young once. And then last quote, my favorite as well, okay. by Thomas Edison. Of course. It says, restlessness is discontent. Mm. And discontent is the first necessity for progress. Thank you. Show me a thoroughly satisfied man mm -hmm. and I'll show you a failure. I'll say it again. It says, restlessness is discontent. Mm -hmm. And discontent is the first necessity for progress. Show me a thoroughly satisfied man and I will show you a failure. And with show those me. words, I say, it's more than just money. Tata, if you guys didn't know how to market your personal brand and anything else that you're selling, <laughs> you've just had a masterclass from Witness Mdaga himself because he's done it perfectly. Thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. This will certainly not be the last time you're here because I think there's a lot to unpack. Yeah. Guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope you were writing down notes. And if not, buy the book. We'll, we'll put the link in the description section so you can buy it. And don't forget to follow our guests on social media because they usually are sharing more content on their social media pages and they're sharing the events, etc. that they are creating or participating in. So please follow them online. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all the things that help this podcast grow and help this podcast to be seen by the right people. And until next time, remember, the only way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. Goodbye. Follow me back to my nest.